Hey guys, you are now tuned into Music Box where you can see the latest in American music videos. I'm your humble host, Maria Cosette. Today I can't emphasize enough just how amazing my show is because I have an awesome guest. I've been a fan of his for over a decade and recently got in touch with him to invite him to Music Box. I'm talking about none other than platinum selling producer and innovative musician, Fred Reck. So stay tuned for an awesome interview and of course the latest music videos. Go to my fan page, go to facebook.com slash musicboxshow and like it. And of course we're streaming online live, go to horizonarmeniantv.com. Stay tuned for the interview. Hey guys, what's up? You're tuned into Music Box and as promised, today my guest is platinum selling producer and innovative musician, I should say, Fred Reck. What's up? Oh, that's very nice of you. Bye, yes. Maria. Bye, Fred. <laughs> How are you? Thank I'm you good. for blessing my Thank set you. today. Thank you for having me on your channel. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, so I know that you're a humble individual, but I am going to pick your brain for the next 20 minutes and we're going to talk about you. Um, so my first question is what first inspired you to get into music? Uh, I think growing up around my house, you know, I grew up in a Palestinian house and we didn't have a radio to listen to whatever music my parents liked. So whenever right. we had parties, like everybody would grab an instrument and start playing and singing songs together. So, oh, cool. So as a young kid, I used to see that, you know, and then um, I grew up in the 80s and, you know, in the first generation of hip hop. So it was like a combination of my upbringing through my parents and my dad he used to always listen to music. And growing up in the hip hop generation, you know, kind of just fell into it. Nice, nice. And um, actually, speaking of, who are some artists, um, not necessarily in hip hop, in any genre of music that you particularly like or are inspired by? Oh, there's so many. Like, I mean, it goes back to James Brown, Marvin Gaye. I like the Beatles. I like Arabic music. I like Um Kulthum. I like uh, Abdul Halim. I like. Um, just like er like every anything that has sound, I mean, I even like Beethoven, Mozart, all that stuff too. So nice. it's just like I just like anything that um, gives you a reaction when you hear it. You know what I mean? Whether it's sad, whether it's happy, I just lo love, always love music. Right. Um, and so I know that because a lot of producers are just strictly like digital producers, and a lot of them don't know how to play the piano, although through their music it may sound like they do because they loop it. Um, but you, on the other hand, know how to play many instruments. So what are some of the instruments that you like to um, play? I like, I mean, I started out playing keyboard. I started out as a DJ and then from DJing, I, I started to play keyboards and then um, I play keyboards, guitar, bass and a little bit of flute. Cool. And um, it just, you know, anything that has a sound like I'll kind of mess with it you know but but going back to producing like you don't really have to play an instrument to be a producer right you know like Quincy Jones he didn't play anything on Michael Jackson's records but he produced it and he told all the musicians what to do so I guess I kind of play both roles when I work with the artist because I do play my own music and you know I, I finish the session and, and right. produce everything awesome um, so speaking of your creative process um, what is your creative process uh, well, my, I, I, you know, I try not to have a creative process, if that makes any sense, because I think that once you, be, you, once you get into a special a routine where you start doing things the same way over and over again, then for me, personally, it's not challenging anymore. Because right. in making music, like, I, I try to challenge myself, whatever the project is or whatever the artist is or whatever the sound is. So I always start off doing it, you know, in a different way. I do have a different processes that I do, but I try not to follow the same one over and right. over again. So it just depends. Like, I'm, you know, some days I'm just like putting stuff into a library in my brain. So I'm listening to music, I'm messing with new instruments, listening to sounds. Other days I'm like making drum kits. Other days I'm just like watching movies. It's just like, you just try to find different ways to be inspired. You right. know, other days I just, other days I try to bring different musicians in just so you can get a different vibe and different feeling. Mm. from other people and just you know because making music is like a social thing so definitely you kind of like want to bring people together and 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 that's the beauty of it is bringing people together and being able to create something that not only that you like but other people will enjoy too well said fred um so i'd like to ask you in regards to collaborating with um you've collaborated with a number of artists and as well a number of producers 
So how is it um, kind of meshing your two, um, I guess, your in both of your inputs and creative processes together? How is it your collaborative work inside the studio with other producers? Um, well, my thing is like most of the artists and producers that I've worked with, I have became friends with before. Right. Because I think if you have some type of other personal relationship with them, it makes it easier for you to critique each other. I mean, it's easy to go in the studio and be like, oh, that sounds good, that sounds good, or you, you know, but it's harder to be able to tell an artist or a producer, hey, let's try something else. Right, let's to be that. completely honest with them. Yeah, and, and sometimes even with me, if I'm not familiar with you and I'm not comfortable with you and I don't respect you, then when I take criticism from somebody, you might be like, well, how can I respect that person's criticism if I don't know where the criticism is coming from? Right. And so you have to have that type of relationship with each other that when somebody tells me, hey, can we try this? And you're like, yeah, no problem, let's try it. Because you both want it to be, everybody wants, has to put their input in mm -hmm. for it to come out good, you know? Um, and then you also have to know when to put your foot down and say, nah, it's gotta, it's gotta stay like this or right. else it's not gonna work. So you gotta have a, some type of a personal, personal relationship with the, with the artist and the other producers or whoever you're working with, musicians, engineers, just the team of people this way you can be able to criticize each other and you can and also not just to criticize each other when you tell somebody that it sounds good that you respect that they really believe that it sounds right. good and that they're just not being a yes man hmm. i like it i like it well we have much more with frederick so stay tuned and of course you can check him out go to his fan page like it go to facebook.com slash frederick music and stay tuned for much more Hey guys, you're tuned into Music Box. I'm your host, Maria Cosette, and today my wonderful guest is Fred Reck, multi platinum selling producer and innovative musician. Uh, blessed to have you here, and of course, I have more questions for you. Thank you, Maria, for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure, Fred. Um, so, we all know Dr. Dre, and uh, I mean, those of you who don't, I don't know, you might have been living in a cave. But um, I wanted to ask you about um, your experience and your first meet with Dre. How was it? And since, how has your relationship with him grown? Uh, let's see. The first time I met Dr. Dre, I left my, uh, I left the CD with some tracks that I had at a studio. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe like five days later, or some, I get a phone call. And then he's like, uh, yo, is Fred there? And I'm like, yeah, this is Fred. He's like, yeah, this is Dre. I'll just listen to your beats and I like him. And I was like, who? And he's like, Dr. Dre. And I'm like, yeah, right. Who's this? You know, like, who's, why are you playing on the phone? Yeah. He's like, no, for real, this is Dre. And I think I just hung the phone up in his face. And then like the phone call, the phone rang back. And That's it, a good thing he called back. He didn't call back, the engineer called back. Oh, okay. And I knew the engineer, his name is Seagal. And he's still my engineer to this day. And. Um, he was like, yeah, this is Seagal, you know, I'm here with Dre, Dre wants to talk to you. I'm like, Dr. Dre? <laughs> He's like, yeah, and then he got on the phone, was like, you believe me now? I was like, man, I'm sorry, like, you know. Yeah. And uh, he invited me to come down to the studio and bring some of my tracks down there, and I've been, we've been friends and working together ever since. And he's just like, a, he's always been a mentor to me, and um, he's always been somebody that I looked up to even before I knew him, that, when, you know, when I used to listen to World Class Wrecking Crew and NWA and all those records, I used to, listen to his production and be like, man, I want to make beats just like that guy. So now to be friends with him and, and to be able to work with him is just like a super honor and it's like a dream come true, really. But he's like the sweetest guy. He's like the nicest, most, he's like really intelligent. And he's just like, when he says something, he, everyone in the whole room pretty much just stops to listen because he's just always got something cool to say. And he's just a funny guy too, you know? Very cool. He's got a really cool character. Very cool. Um, so in regards to the artists you've collaborated with, um, there have been many, Corrupt, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, uh, Britney Spears, uh, Hilary Duff as well, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I would like to ask you your unbiased opinion. Who's your favorite artist that you've collaborated with? Um... Uh... I mean, it's hard I mean, to say that because yeah. with everyone, there is a different magic. But. Yeah, for real. With everyone, there is a different magic. But probably my favorite to work with is Snoop Dogg just because he's just hilarious and he's just yeah. a character. Like, <laughs> I mean, the guy, he just has so much charisma. I mean, when he just walks in the studio and walks in the room, you just know you're about to have fun. Even if he's in a bad mood wherever he, or if he's in a good mood, it's just going to be, you're going to have a fun time with him. And he's just like, he makes you, he gives you so much confidence when you're working and then and then working with him is like is like you know makes you feel like 
when you're in high school and you're like making music for the first time. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Everyone's just kind of playing around and everyone's joking around and he's like cracking jokes the whole time and he's just like, it just it's just like a really comfortable environment and he's Snoop Dogg too. So to be able to produce Snoop Dogg is like such an honor that you really like want to give him your best work. So right. it's like a challenge to you every time to, to, to do the best thing you can for him. So it, he's probably he's he's probably the funnest person that I could say that that I work with. My, my other ones are fun too in their own way, but he's right. the, he's the, he's the funniest. I kind of look at Snoop as um, you know how Madonna's like always reinventing herself. Snoop's kind of like that in hip hop. Yeah, he's Snoop like he Ryan. always tries. To, yeah, he always you know keeps it relative yeah. and he's adapts like, to the times. I mean, if you look back at all the stuff he's done, I mean, he's done country songs with Willie Nelson. And, That's so cool. And That's Everlast, awesome. and he's just like. He's such a musical guy. Right. He's pretty much the only guy that can get away with anything. Right. You know what I mean? We just went to Dubai and did a New Year's show um, this year. And I've never seen an artist wear a local gondora but he live on stage. But he can do it and put it, pull it off where it's not disrespectful and he's not looking silly. Right. You know, he can pretty much do anything because if he's going to do it, he's, he's never going to do it out of disrespect. He's always going to do it out of, out of having a love for something and to show it show its respect right you know what i mean so he can he, he pretty much can pull off anything and he's always like thinking of new ways to, to 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 do something new and challenge himself too right so yeah so it must be really cool to work with an artist like that totally. um because you so, never you can never you never know what to expect from him right which is good nice um so speaking of your travels, I want to get into that a bit. Uh, you've been traveling a lot lately and um, have been performing, as a matter of fact, as a DJ. Um, so how's your experience in front of a crowd performing as opposed to in the studio producing? Well, because I started out as a DJ, so to go and DJ at clubs and things like that, I don't do it all the time, but I do, I do take some time out a couple months out of the year where I'm not in the studio to go out and, and, and DJ and stuff right. because that's my roots and that's where I started out. That's very and, cool. I love it that you do that. And it's like, it's like an experiment almost because when I go out to clubs, it's like that's my time to research in a way. Right. And to see what people react to in the dance floor, to see what songs that, not just to see what songs that they like, but what in each song makes people react. Sometimes right. they like the intro, sometimes they sing along to a certain parts. And I, and, and I, like I use it in my research, so when I go back in the studio, I remember, oh yeah, in that 2 Chain <laughs> song, it was, they like this thing in there. Or like, you know, in, in this house song that they like when the music dropped out and the, and right. the swooshes are coming on and everyone's building up. So like I use the DJ and, and to go see what people are reacting to in the clubs because, you know, most of the music that we've made throughout the years becomes club music, even though that it's like hip hop or gangster music or right. even the pop music, it's still like when you, if you can play it in a club and keep people dancing. Cause it has that groove to it, Fred. Yeah, it's got a little bounce yeah. to it. You know, you gotta keep people, in, <laughs> keep people interested. Yeah. So yeah, I like it. And plus you get to go out to, you know, I get to go all around the world and meet people in France and people. Yes, in, where have you like, gone? I've been Africa, following you on like, Instagram. Yeah, like I go wherever they want me to go. I'm there because I just like to meet people from different cultures and different things and smell different smells and eat different food and hear what people have to say. You know, you know, it's just, it's just, I've, I've been really blessed to be able to go do that. Very much so. Yeah, I've seen some of the pictures on Instagram. It's first of all, you're a great photographer. Um, so you. the pictures are phenomenal. And just to be where you are doing what you love is really a blessing. Um, so what about the crowd as opposed to like an L.A. crowd or even anywhere in the States? How is the crowd different overseas? Because I have a, uh, some friends that are, you know, their bands, they go touring and they always say the bands over uh, the crowds, I should say, the audience overseas is much more passionate. Yeah, is that true? yeah, because overseas you, they don't see you all the time. So when you do go over there and you're in their town, it's mm -hmm. like it's like they embrace you because you they they listen to your music all the time. And and when you get to go to their city, it's like wow, he came to our country or he came to our town and he came to our place that we all hang out. Right. And so they give you that much more respect. And and it's like if you have a fan out there, you have them for life. I hear it's kind of like people become fans of music just because their friends listen to it. Right, or, or it's right. like a fad almost, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But out there, like when you have a fan, they like, they know all your music. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, so they come cool. to the shows and they start, they start playing songs that, you're, that I forgot that I made. And like, <laughs> I'm like, wow, you like that? So it's like, they really appreciate you. So, you know, I like to go back there and show them all the love and take pictures and, you know, 
talk to them and let them, you know, they always got questions for, yo, how is it this guy and how is Snoop and how is Nate Dogg and how is, you know, everybody. So it's cool. Like, I, I love it. Very cool. Um, before we cut to a break and then we're going to come back with just a little more. Um, since you mentioned Nate Dogg, I know that you had a very close relationship with him. Um, how has it been kind of amongst the people that you guys have all grown together in the music industry when he passed away? Uh, it was really sad. Like even to now, it's really sad to like every day, like I want to pick up the phone and call him. So, you know, he was a dear friend, to all of us. And, you know, even people might, when you see him, you know, he had this very mystical persona. Like he never really smiled or, you know, he was always like, kind of looking kind of mean, mean mugging everyone, but he was just the sweetest, funnest guy to be around. And everybody, all of us, like we all miss him to death. And you know, musically, nobody will ever be able to fill his shoes. He was, was and is a legend. Yeah, and it's just definitely. sad that he had to go so soon, but his, his music still lives and he still lives with us, you know, every day. Oh, definitely, most definitely. RIP, Nate. Oh, so we don't want to keep it on a sad note, but it is definitely uplifting to um, have been close with someone of that um, great talent. So we have a lot more, or I should say not that much more, but I'm happy to have you here. And oh, I can't. We're not going to be here for another hour. No, we just have a couple more questions for you. So um, stay tuned. Go to facebook.com slash music. Stay tuned. You are back with Music Box. I'm your host, Maria Cosette. I'm here with Fred Reck. We're about to wrap up the interview, but of course, stay tuned for some great music videos. Um, so, Fred, I wanted to ask you, what are your future aspirations? Um, you know, I just want to try to do different types of music. I've been traveling overseas. I went to um, the Middle East and did some music out there with uh, Middle Eastern artists from Egypt. Nice. Um, I have this group from out there called Arabian Nights. Um, I have a female artist that's in Lebanon named Malika. Um, I have an artist in Saudi Arabia named Kasai. Um, so I've been going out there to the Middle East and trying to get that scene going. Right. And you know, they, it's like it's like these artists are such an inspiration because they're like the NWAs and public enemies of their countries. Right. So they're groundbreaking artists. They're groundbreaking and the, and they're very political and social and all the things that they've been rapping about for years are now taking hold in the countries and all these revolutions are happening from the youth and uh, so it's like they're like the message you know they're like the CNN's of their country right. so I've been going out there and doing that um, I want to I want to um, get into more film production um, me and Corrupt are doing a film for his next move uh, for his next album we're, we're gonna do an album but now we're, we're gonna do like a film to his album it's called Scuba Dust so it's gonna be like some bugged out Stanley Kubrick crazy psychedelic um, music with the um, with the film that's going to go along with it. So I'm looking forward to doing some some different things. And is that, that kind of like with a, music? Right. And is that kind of like a sequel to Space Boogie cuz I'm a huge fan right. of that. Right. Space album. Boogie was like Space Boogie was like we took you to outer space, you know, we took you higher. And now this one we're taking you underwater, so we're calling Dope. it Scuba Dust. Um, and so, what would you consider I ask all of my guests this. Uh, what would you consider to be the pinnacle of your career? Well, I don't know. I, I don't think I've gotten to the pinnacle of my career. I mean, I've still, I don't think I've done it yet. I still have so many other things that I want to do. And um, I don't do a lot of things because I'm really like meticulous and I'm picky about the projects that I work on. So I might not work on anything for a year just because I don't feel like the sound is right. And right. I don't do, I don't do music for my own vanity just to put stuff out. I really like wanted to have a, a, a process and have it you know have a meaning and you know and be something that really means something so you know my pinnacle would be just to just to keep doing it man that's my pinnacle and just you know to be able to just kick back and go around the world take care of my family and just you know do simple things take take pictures and just be happy man I love it um, so I know all of your fans are tuned in. They were actually really stoked when I posted that you're going to be my guest today. Um, and you. yes, and uh, so they're all tuned in and I'm sure a lot of uh, musicians and aspiring producers are tuned in as well. What advice would you give to up and coming producers? Uh, my advice would be like everything that if you want, like when I was growing up, we didn't have a lot of avenues to learn where to produce at, whereas now you could go on YouTube, you can you, right. know, you can look at all these different um, documentaries and diff different 
tutorials of how to produce whatever you want to produce. So learn as much as you can about the equipment, learn as much as you can about music. Um, you know, I tell everyone, study the greats, you know, always go back and research who inspired these different artists. Like if you like my music, then you should go back and and look at Dr. Dre's music and see who inspired him, Parliament, Funkadelic, and who those guys were, James Brown, and who just go all the way back and study as much as you can. And um, don't just study one type of music. If you like hip hop, you know, you gotta like R&B, you gotta like rock, you gotta like everything because right. hip hop music has so many different influences in it that you can't be a well-rounded producer unless you know all that stuff. So I try to tell, you know, everybody to go study as much stuff as you can. And um, to make like, if you want to make beats, make make a thousand beats, you know, because every one you make is going to be better than the next one. If if a, a guy that made a thousand beats compared to somebody that made ten thousand beats, I'm sure the kid that made ten thousand beats, his sound is going to be much better. So if you, you know, if you want to do it, just be passionate about doing it. Don't do it for the money. Don't do it for anything more than just loving to do it. And that's why I think that's my, um, that's why I'm still here today is because I just I don't know anything else. You know, I just love producing music. I like working with people, and I like the fact that music brings people together. That's probably the most important part of it. Everything else Lovely. I love it. Thank you so much. I want to sincerely thank you for coming thank you for on having Music me, Maria. And I want everybody to go down there and keep this channel on, Horizon TV. And I want to shout out all my Armenian fans and all my Armenian friends out here in California and wherever else this, this goes. So. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it together. Armenian and Palestinian love. Aw, thank you. Sincerely thankful and blessed to have you here on Music Box. And once again, go to facebook.com slash Music. Thank you. Peace.